Many of the comments on this channel are people worrying about whether they'll be able to find a job after college, which is a totally fair concern, and I had the same thoughts years ago of will my four years of hard work pay off. But I ended up landing three engineering positions before graduating at Northrop Grumman, Raytheon, and Space Systems Row. and I don't think I did anything that special in terms of networking, doing extracurriculars, getting hands-on experience, and so on. So if you can relate to that, hopefully this video gives you some hope. With that said, do not take this as me telling you exactly what you should do. This is simply my story, interpret it however you like, but no, I did not do everything perfectly. So let's just get into it. First thing I did was apply a lot. I applied to probably over 100 job positions all over the country. I did not limit myself to any specific city or state or anything like that. Even when I did not feel fully qualified, I still applied. There are a lot of memes out there about entry level jobs, which honestly can feel really accurate. The whole entry level but needs five years of experience is probably something you'll come across in one way or another, but if it was listed as an entry level job, I still applied anyway. How I applied was pretty much all online. I started looking for jobs around November, seven months before my June graduation date, and kept looking through probably April. Now you can do two main things when applying online. You can Google entry level engineering jobs in whatever city you want to live in, or you can go to the websites of the companies you want to work for and search through all job positions that you qualify for. I mostly did the latter of searching through all the companies I wanted to work at. I did want to work for an aerospace or defense company because a lot of their projects intrigued me, but again, I applied to plenty of other companies because I was mainly concerned with just getting a job. Then on various company websites, there's an option for you to upload your resume and information to their system. Then you can even sign up for alerts that let you know when a new job has become available that you qualify for. Then you can easily apply and submit everything very quickly. And this is something I did very early. I was getting alerts for weeks, which honestly kind of got annoying, but I really needed this to be as automated as possible. We're gonna go through my entire resume really soon, but when it came to my job applications, the one thing you may be wondering about is the expected salary portion. And I honestly had no clue what to put for this. So I did a simple Google search and looked up average entry level electrical engineering salary, found it was about 65,000 per year and put that on every application. I did a little more research, but I really kept it simple and it never came up in any interview, so it all worked out in the end. One thing I want to acknowledge already is that this is not the most ideal situation when it comes to looking for jobs. Ideally, you make connections while working on a project or you get an internship that guarantees you a job after college, but that's not how it worked out for me. I didn't really know anyone at the companies I was applying to and just had to make the most of it. And that's why I do pretty much all my applying online. One way to avoid this is to attend career fairs. Now, I went to a fair amount of these, but they never really led to anything. However, I did have friends who were getting interviews in October and November, which eventually led to job opportunities. I did a whole video on career fairs, so I won't go into too much detail, but this is where recruiters come to you. So even if you're a freshman, do not be afraid to go. Now let's go through my resume so you can see what kind of projects I was working on and what my qualifications were. And this is the actual resume I was using to apply to these full-time jobs. I did not change anything. First, I got all my education information. Since many people will ask, I went to Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. You'll notice I put a few concentrations, and that's because even though I was an electrical engineer, as with most engineering disciplines, you take electives where you specialize in a certain subfield of your major, and I took quite a few of these in the three I listed here. Then my major GPA was pretty high. I have done a whole video on if college GPA matters and the general answer is usually no, but it can definitely help in certain situations. At the internship I got my third year, my boss told me that they had to remove resumes with a GPA lower than 3.0 so they could weed out certain candidates. I can't say that it had a huge effect on me getting the jobs that I did, but it may have been a factor at least. The next came relevant coursework, where by my senior year, I had plenty of upper division classes relevant to the jobs I was interested in. In some of my interviews, I was asked which one of these were my favorite or what kinds of projects I worked on. But what you're seeing here are mostly upper division electrical engineering classes. Next came the skills section where I listed the software and hardware I was familiar with. Even if I used something like one time, I still listed it. And these are some pretty typical things you can expect to see or learn about in labs as an electrical engineer in college. And then comes the projects. And the first one I listed was my senior project and I am so happy I was able to work on this. It was a project funded by Northrop Grumman where we had to design a sense and avoid system for two UAVs. My part was to work on the communication such that the two UAVs could send data packets to each other and the ground station safely and securely. How I got that was I seriously had no idea what I wanted to do for my senior project. So I emailed a bunch of professors asking for ideas and one emailed me back saying she was in charge of this Northrop Grumman project and said they had a spot available and I joined immediately. 
But I also found out that anyone could work on this project, even freshmen were coming on just to learn and observe what was going on. So as I've emphasized before, make sure you know what's going on at your school because there are way more projects being worked on by students than you may realize. When I was being interviewed for these full-time jobs, this senior project was something I was asked about every single time. They wanted to know what I worked on, what I learned, if I got leadership experience from it, and so on. And because I was applying to a lot of defense companies, this project definitely looked good. The next project I listed was a wireless lux meter that I made in an electronics class, which everyone had to do. So that wasn't super unique, but it was a good project to include because it took several weeks to work on and I learned a lot from it. Then I put a few more projects on that were all done in various classes. None of these I did on my own or outside of the required labs, which isn't the best practice either. The one you see here I actually did my freshman year where I had to make a power supply which looks sort of like this. Looks pretty advanced, but I had no clue what I was doing. We were just given instructions, but weren't sure why we were doing really anything. But it did provide me with a lot of hands-on experience, so of course I included it in my resume. Then lastly, I had my experience section. Right at the top was the internship I had my third year where I got to work on a wireless printing device. It wasn't exactly related to the jobs in RF and wireless communications I was looking for after college, but of course I still included it on my resume. And then below that was my experience as an instructional student assistant, which is a fancy title for saying I graded homework and quizzes for professors in these various classes. This was actually a great job because I got to make some money, work from home, and got to put something on my resume. But that was really it. I did get to work on some cool projects, but I was mostly just highlighting what I did in my required labs during college. I'll attach my full resume down below if you want to check it out or even download it for yourself and put in your own information. Lastly, when it came to interviews, most of them consisted of people looking over my resume and asking me questions about it. They wanted to know which classes interested me the most, what my specific goals were, why I chose the major I did, and so on. I did get technical questions though where they asked me things like sketch the frequency response of a certain circuit, or how do electromagnetic waves lose power as they travel some distance. And I want to stress I was never able to answer every single question they asked. There were times I had to simply say, sorry, I don't know. And there were other times where even though I didn't know the exact answer, I was able to talk it through a little bit with the person interviewing me. And that's sometimes more of what they're looking for. They don't want to see that you know everything. They just want to see what your thought process is. Then even though I did get three jobs, which will seem like a lot to some people, this process was filled with rejection. I applied to over a hundred job positions. So it was weeks to months of those constant emails saying, thank you for your consideration, but we're going to move forward or just not hearing back at all. Lots of companies will just not get back to you. I was definitely frustrated and if you're in a position feeling like no one will ever get back to you, I felt the same way, but I just kept applying and it all eventually worked out. Remember 100 rejections and one acceptance means you have a job and especially to begin, all you need is that one. And I'm gonna end that video here. Before you go, if you want more information on my salary and expenses while at that first job, or you wanna see more of what my responsibilities were, you can click the videos on the screen now. Otherwise, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next video.